Welcome back, everybody. Mr. Anderson here again uh, in the second part of uh, Section 4.4. This is where we're actually going to talk about complex numbers. Uh, so complex numbers have imaginary numbers uh, within them, basically. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started. Our objective for today we want to be able to perform operations with complex numbers. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but I pulled out another light, and so I got my light back. Yeah, the thing just burned out, and so I got another shop light going here, so uh, we're looking good. Um, complex number. What is a complex number? Uh, basically, it's just a number made up of a real part. That's the number part, and an imaginary part. Um, and it's where it's being added or subtracted in between. And so here's an example. 5 plus 2i. That's uh, what they consider a complex number. Um, um, the 5 and the 2i are not considered like terms, so you can't just add them together. Um, so that's why you have to keep them separate. And in this case, 5, the number 5, is the real part of the complex number and 2i is the imaginary part. That's what we've talked about before. Remember we we had 2i uh, or 5i or something like that, 8i. So that's the imaginary part. We've talked a little bit about that stuff before. So you've got the real part and the imaginary part. All right, so at first this seems a little complicated, but just stick with me here. This isn't really all that bad. Remember that general format that you've got the real part and the imaginary part, okay? So when you get a problem like this where they're asking you to find the value of x and y that make the following equations true. Here's what you're going to do. All right, let's take a look. Uh, where's, oh, there I am up there. Um, let's take a look, first of all, at, uh, doesn't matter where we start, but on this first part, on this part of the equation here, 2x is the real part. There's no i involved there. That corresponds with negative 14. That's the real part on this side. So what you have to do is just find out what value of x would it take to make 2x equal negative 14. So all you have to do is 2x equals negative 14. Write a little equation and solve that. And we divide by 2. So x equals negative 7. So that's what x would have to equal. That would make the real parts equal. And then secondarily, there's the imaginary part, because that's where the i is. And here's the imaginary part. And so in this situation, then we say the i part's the same. So what's different? Well, here you have y, and here you have minus 3. So you go, well, that means that, in this case, y would have to equal a negative 3. If y was a negative 3, then those parts would match up. So these have to be the, the values that you get for x and y in order to make this equation true. The real part would match up, and the imaginary part would match up. I think i got one more here. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated, but let's just, again, look at what's real and what's imaginary. So first of all, down here, you've got this 3x plus or 3x minus 5. That's the real part because there's no i in there, which matches up with 7. That's the real part on this side. So that means that we've got 3x minus 5 would have to equal 7. And we solve that equation by doing plus 5. 3x equals 12, divide by 3, so we see that, oh, well, x has to equal 4. So in this case, in order for the real part to match up, x would have to equal 4. Let's look at the other part. So then here's the imaginary part. So the i, again, the i is the same. So what has to match up is the y minus 3 here has to equal the 6. So y minus 3 has to equal 6. And then we add 3. And so y would equal 9. 
So in this, in this case, x would have to equal 4 and y would have to equal 9. That's how we could get the two sides to equal. All right. Next. Now this is this is pretty easy here. So this is some good stuff here. That one was a little complicated. This one's really really um, nice. We want to simplify and add two complex numbers. Okay. The, it looks like it might be a little complicated, but basically, remember before when we added uh, binomials like if it was x plus 2 and x minus 4, we just added the x's together and we added the numbers together. Same thing here. You just add the like terms. So 3 and 2 are like terms, so we add those together to get 5. And the 5i and the negative 4i will add together, or subtract in this case, so 5i minus 4i is 1i, which would just be plus i. So 5 plus i would be our solution there, just adding like terms. And then subtraction, same thing that we've done before. And if you notice, there's a minus in between. Anytime we have a minus sign in front of a parentheses, what do we need to do with that? Distribute the negative. So this is really 4 minus 6i minus 3, and then minus a negative would make it plus 7i. Hmm, what do we do now? Oh, I don't know. How about combine like terms? Yes. Okay, so what do we got? Like terms. 4 minus 3 is 1. That's the real part. And the imaginary part would be negative 6i plus 7i, and so that would be the same thing as 7i minus 6i, which would be 1i, again, interest, interestingly enough. So 1 plus i. So that's all we're doing. Whenever we add or subtract complex numbers, just add the real numbers together, add the uh, imaginary parts together, and, um, and that's what you get. All right. Multiplying complex numbers. Hmm, ooh, again, this looks like it might be a little hard, but guess what? This works the same way as when we learned how to multiply binomials. And when we multiplied binomials, what was the key thing there? F-O-I-L, FOIL. That's all we're going to do is FOIL, okay? So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3 times 4i, when we multiply they don't have to be like terms to multiply, remember. So 3 times 4i is 12i. Uh, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4i. And then 2i times 4i, 2 times 4 is 8. And i times i is i squared. We'll have to take care of that in a minute. But just like before, combine like terms. Those are like terms. So we've got negative 6. 12 minus 4 is 8i. And then we've got plus 8. What's i squared? Remember from uh, the last uh, video? i squared is really negative 1. So this is like 8 times a negative 1. And so this is the same thing as negative 6 plus 8i minus 8. And then you notice, oh, we still have some like terms here. Let's combine those and what we get is negative 14 plus 8i. So, you know, a little bit more to do than FOIL, but basically we're just FOILing it, and then uh, we have to take care of that i squared and combine like terms. So negative 14 plus 8i. All right. Let's look at one more here of this kind. FOIL it. So 6 times 9. 54, 6 times 2 i's plus 12 i, negative 8 i times 9 is a negative 72 i, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16 i squared. So we foiled it, we'll combine the like terms and, and kind of simplify this. So 12 i um, minus 72 
That'd be the same thing as like 72 minus 12, except for it'd be a negative. So this is going to be a negative 60i, 54. And then remember, this i squared is going to make it a negative 1. So what's a negative 16 times a negative 1? Positive 16. And so then we've got two like terms here that we can combine. So that's going to be uh, 60, 70 minus 60i. And by the way, that you notice how I'm writing these when I write them, um, it's, that's the, kind of the normal way that people do it is they write the real term out front and then the imaginary term um, at the end here. So that's kind of the way it's done. All right, so there's multiplying complex numbers. All right, a couple more examples here where we're dividing. Okay, this, this is, uh, gets a little more interesting. All right, when we're dividing here, one of the main things that's a big problem is this i on the bottom of a fraction. We do not like to have an i on the bottom of a fraction, um, mainly because, remember, an i is really a square root of a negative 1, and we don't like square roots on the bottom of a fraction. Um, and I, you know, I didn't come up with this, but along the line somewhere, um, I heard the term that uh, you can't have any hookers in the basement. So if that helps you to remember that, you know, because the square root is, you know, it's got kind of a hook in it there. So you can't have any of those in the basement, which is in the denominator of the fraction. So this, that's what applies here is we can't have this I in the, in the denominators. Well, how do we get rid of, if you remember some of the things that we've done before, how did we do stuff to get rid of an I or to change it into a number? Well, if you remember, when we took i times i and got i squared, that became a negative 1, right? Remember that? So in this, in this case right here, I could multiply this one by i on the bottom, which would give me 2i squared, which is really 2 times a negative 1, or negative 2. Okay, do you follow that? So multiply by i there to make that i squared. i squared is really a negative 1, and then negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Well, what do we do on the top? Remember, whenever we do something with a fraction, if we do something on the bottom, we have to do the same thing on the top. So I'm going to take this whole thing on the top in parentheses times i, which means I'm going to have to distribute the i. So I'm going to go i times 5 is 5i, i times i is i squared. What's i squared really? Minus 1. So this is like, and I'm going to switch this around to kind of get this in the order that we're used to seeing it in. So i squared is a negative 1, and then plus 5i, since we usually see it in that form. And then what's often done here is remember when we write our write our uh, complex number we have the real number out front by itself and then the imaginary part of the number so once you get to this point then you can just break up um, this one with the the two here and the five i with the two and write them separately so negative one over negative two is really one half and then five i over 2 is like saying minus 5 halves i would be the way that you would want to write your final answer there. Because then you have, you don't have it all kind of mishmashed together here. You've got the real part, the 1 half, and the imaginary part, the 5 halves. But notice you can take both parts um, on the top here and put them over that negative 2. Okay? So that's what you do if you have just an i on the bottom or a number times i, like this, in this case, 2i, you just multiply by i uh, to get the i squared. One more situation. What about this one? We're dividing again. But if you notice now, because there's a 1 plus i, if I multiply this thing and went times i, 
I could go i times i as i squared, but then I'd have to distribute it to the 1. And that makes another i that I'd have to try to get rid of. And I'm kind of in this cycle. Well, here's what we do to get rid of um, something like this. And again, this is already uh, a complex number on the bottom before we just had an imaginary number on the bottom. I'm going to multiply by what's called conjugate. It's conjugate, okay? So the conjugate of 1 plus i, it's going to be the same terms inside there, except for the sign's going to change. So the conjugate of 1 plus i is 1 minus i. So that's the conjugate. This will get rid of um, the i on the bottom here. And again, if we do 1 minus i on the bottom, we have to do 1 minus i on the top. Okay, so let's go through and, and work this all out now. We've mul we're multiplying these together. That means FOIL. So here's what I've got. I've got 1 times 1 is 1 minus i. Then here it's going to be plus i. And then i times negative i is minus i squared. Notice what happened here. Negative i plus i, those canceled. So that's why, that's why this works, is you get these middle terms that cancel. And then uh, i squared is really a negative 1, so this is minus a negative 1, which is really minus a negative is plus 1. So this is really like 1 plus 1 or 2. So when I multiply by its conjugate, I just get 2 on the bottom here. And then on the top, I've got to take this 3i and distribute it. So 3i times 1 is 3i, and 3i times a negative i is minus 3i squared. i squared there is really just negative 1, right? So that's going to be negative 3 times a negative 1 is plus 3. So again, I'm going to kind of change the order here, so it's going to be a plus 3 and then the 3i. to get that in the order we like it. And again, then we want to split this up into the two parts. And so this is going to be 3 halves. That's this 3 over that 2 plus 3 halves i, which is that 3 over that 2. So 3 halves plus 3 halves i. The real part comes first, and the imaginary part comes second. So the key there, again, is when you want to get rid of um, something like this that's a complex number on the bottom of a fraction, you have to multiply by its conjugate. So that's the key there, the 1 minus i. All right, so that's, um, that's going to do it for this section, the uh, section 4.4b, uh, which is dealing with complex numbers. So um, Mr. Anderson signing off. We'll see you next time. Bye.